Great show. So excited to get this one out. Give me one sec. I'm getting a phone call. Oh, it's from Boss Wolf. Ooh. Hey, boss. How's it going? I heard you got a bit of a kaiju problem. Yeah, we just finished recording. Just did a giveaway. Oh, that's what you wanted to talk about. You don't think we're groveling enough? What can we do? How can we make this better for you? We want to continue the giveaways. People love them. You have one condition. Okay, what is it? Has the mailman been by? What kind of question is that? You have a package for me maybe in Diamond? How'd you get our addresses? Boss? Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Dan show. show. This week's giveaway is sponsored by Boss Wolf. Boss Wolf is giving away a Genesis Ape High Top. And you can win it by liking and following us on Twitter at The Dam Show. Now let's get back to the show. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Maybe let's start with you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's been like a very intensive week. We did live streams we did like a million things create mass whatever so i'm tired but i'm happy i got so many new nfts this week i'm so happy so yeah as a true degen everything's good it feels like the old days again in the bull market yeah <laughs> true <laughs> diamond how about you how are you doing same. I mean, I'm tired, but I'm mean, an incredible week, an absolute like rocket ride of a week. Hanging in still, hanging in still. Just got home. I haven't even been able to catch up with anything 10KTF since like the day before yesterday. So feeling good, excited to kick it with my friends, kick it with the homies. Yeah. And uh, let's get the damn show going on. And speaking Woo! of speaking of getting it going, Diamond, we're going to cut to the video right now. But you had a monumental moment just a few days ago. You bought your first WoW, which was your grail. So I'm going to cut to the video. I'm Let's so nervous. I got butterflies right now. Dude, this is crazy. Oh, I'm just taking my time. I'm working through OpenSea right now. But everybody can know that we got screen share working. And Diamond, tell us what you're about to do. What's I'm going about on, to buy my motherfucking world of women. My grail, my all time. Like when I first tapped into the NFT space, I like if you all saw the damn show a few weeks ago, like, Watching the way that World of Women is building bridges out here for folks, creating opportunities for third world artists, for women in crypto, for women in NFTs, and for artists, low level artists, high level artists, it doesn't matter. They're building multiple multi-layered bridges right now. And it's just a project that I'm extremely fucking excited to be joining. I don't know. This is crazy, y'all. This is fucking nuts. And so like at the very beginning of when I started this NFT journey, to now being able to purchase a wow. Y'all, when we got started in 10KTF back in September, I did not fucking think this was possible. Like no fucking yeah. way. So some of Anything you that are possible. out there are like, I don't know if I can make it with someone else's bags or you know someone else's PFP on this bag or this pair of shoes. It's about like the larger thesis, understanding that we're all going to make it and it's going to take time, right? It doesn't all come in one wave, but like stay with what you're doing, keep building, keep adding value to your community, keep adding value to your project and, uh, and amazing things, amazing things can come back to you. I'm just fucking like fluttering inside. And this wow has blonde hair as well. Reminds me, it has that mom factor for me, which is extremely important in my NFT journey. It's an NFT that I love regardless of whether it's a WoW or whether it's 10KTF, what items are involved with it or any connective tissue beyond the fact that just there's a symbolism for my mom behind it. And so I'd like to share a picture of my mom real quick with y'all. Her name was Anna and yeah, she gives me all this juice that y'all get from me every week, all this crazy fucking wah. That all comes from her. And, uh, you know, my dad's awesome, but like he's more like stone, like bruh, style, where my mom knows how to like live her life in the light, whatever that is. And she taught me like how to love proper. And so this, like, what it means for me is, is fucking everything, if I was being honest. So let's fucking do this. What do you think, y'all? Huh? Yes. Uh, I've been yeah, yeah. tap into a fucking grail to an absolute legacy NFT. I'm fucking Let's ready. Do it. This is happening right now. This right? is happening. I'm about to spend fucking five thousand dollars on a fucking wow. Let's go. Oh my god. 
Hey, and don't get it twisted. The other piece of this is with this floor at fucking 2.8, knowing that Gaio series connected to this fucking project, knowing the quality of community that continues to build in the background, knowing that I got my girl Netta holding it down up top, Cash V, and this, this, the recording we did the other week for Damn Show. Y'all, it all fucking adds up. And at the end of the day, it all matters, right? Yeah. And so like this floor where this project's headed, this floor's too low for me right now. It's too low for me to not believe that there's additional quote unquote value, but like you'd have mm -hmm. to sell to find that value. So I'll never fucking discover that, right? But like the floor's too low in value for me to not fucking make this move. Dawson yes. Drew did a post about this the other day and I was like, that makes a lot of fucking sense. If I had to find an NFT that's gonna 3X or 4X, has the opportunity to do that with where the floor is at now. I, I really think that this is that NFT for me personally right now. Y'all do what you do, but what do you think? Should we click this confirm button? Confirm yes! it, baby. Let's confirm. go. We're waiting. Okay. We're waiting. All right. My finger's off the button. I smacked it down. My finger's off the button, y'all. It's not in your hands anymore. It's in the blockchain. It's, just, it's in the it's, blockchain. It's, it's, it's in the blockchain. This is fucking oh! happening. Oh! This is fucking happening. It's happening. It's happening. Oh my God. I'm so happy for you. I fucking Whoa! made it. Yeah. I fucking made it. Like, look. Yes. I fucking, y'all. Yes. Blue chip NFT, top tier. My all time fucking grail reminds me of my mom. Oh Whoa. my God, y'all. I know this is a technological experience for us, a technological journey, but it's an incredibly human experience. I fucking love all of you so fucking much. Whoa. Let's go, man. Let's go. All by yeah. you. It looks so good. Dude, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations, my friend. Dude. Big deal. Big moves. Congrats, Diamond. This is amazing. Y'all. What's going on out here in NFTs right now? Wait, what the fuck is going on out here in NFTs? Everyone else ran away in the bear market. But there's still some fucking incredible things happening right now. Hell yeah. yeah. Dude, if y'all mind, just I'm, I'm take a second and just kind of... Take it in. This moment. Like, y'all, like, I've worked really fucking hard. Like, I'm not going to lie. It fucking means the world to me, y'all. To the team at 10KTF. To my community to the places that we're gonna go. Fucking A, this is making it, y'all. This is fucking making it. Let's go, bro. <laughs> Congrats. Let's go, Diamond. Go. Let's yes. fucking go. You've Dude. had a crazy 24 hours from that flamethrower last yeah. night to the wow tonight, man. Yeah. But like I told you before, I don't know if we, we mentioned this on stream, but like without that gift of that flamethrower, I don't get the opportunity to release those extra crates. Right. And so like, it's all an interconnected experience at the end of yeah. the day. If I don't make this move now, I remember looking back to the wizards when we first mm -hmm. got our blanks and there was a point in time where I could have sold my blanks and picked up a fucking quality wizard mm -hmm. and I didn't make the right play, you know, and that's okay. Right. But that's part of this big, like open game theory that we get to yeah. play in 10 KTF, you know, and, and it's all good. I fucking love the cult. Shout out East shorts who gifted me into the cult otherwise, right? Sent me a warrior and was like, homeboy, you're with us. Let's roll. And I'm like, let's be fucking hell. I'm with us. I'm with us. Yes. You know? And so like, I don't know. It's just, it's crazy. And without that gift, right? Without these things that happen in NFTs, people looking out for other people without this like bigger concern about what it is to, to find value, right? And without y'all, I wouldn't be making it in this journey. And so like, it's, I just, there's so many connective pieces in this that really speak to this ethos of like what the culture is. Culture's building itself to being, right? It's bigger than any of this web two shit. We define what web three is going to be. So how are you feeling now, Diamond? It's been a few days. Has it sunk in? Oh my gosh. Really, not really. I mean, I've had toad ass as my PFP ever since. And so like, <laughs> if you haven't, if you haven't updated your PFP, like, is, is it really in, uh, like, have you really purchased anything in your wallet? Like no one really <laughs> knows is what I'm finding out. And so I shared a little bit about it on new Tokyo news yesterday, but, uh, 
just an absolute, like I said, rocket ride of a week. Couldn't be more happy to join such a well-balanced and an egalitarian community. You know, they focus on intersectionality over at World of Women, and that's something I'm totally about. So building bridges and creating roads and opportunities for folks out here in NFTs. Gaio Series, a part of that project, which is a link into 10KTF as well. And I'm really excited to see what's going to go on with that in the future. Personally, I think that floor is way too fucking low right now but i understand times are tough right now for folks too and honestly like considering all things in the market that it kind of made like you know that perspective that much more important you know i had a fucking amazing week but at the same time i also know that a lot of folks out there are, are watching their bags disintegrate in front of their eyes and it's hard for folks right now you know i'm seeing it on my timeline people are trying to bring good vibes where they can but like it's hard you know and, and i get it so I'm just trying to keep that perspective and balance but couldn't be more happy couldn't be more grateful for what's gone down in the last few days yeah Absolutely. And I think your week, especially with the Thursday live stream, we have to talk about that. I don't think we've done that yet to set it up for anybody that missed it. First of all, tune into the damn live streams because they're <laughs> an event. We have so much fun. We get the community involved. People jump on stage. People share their comments. But on the Thursday on Crate Miss Diamond, you had a very special opportunity. Do you want to walk us through what happened and, and that whole experience, please? I just got chills down my neck, just like thinking about it again, like legit, like, it, yeah, let's throw it back. Like, oh, hey, Netta, we love you so much. Netta was sleeping, you know, she's had a, a tough transition from Italy back to New York. So glad you're back in the States and getting some balance, <laughs> friend. But, uh, you know, we, hey, it was great, miss. And I, like, I hadn't opened anything and so we just wanted to jump on. And so we fired up a damn show, me and Atari did. And we had some amazing community members come on. Van Buren opened up like fucking 25 crates and hit for like 20 vests. It was oh my insane. God, that's crazy. Van Buren was blessed with the best beer in label. Best beer in. <laughs> yeah, best beer in. But, and, you know, we were clicking our heels. Figgy jumped in the chat and said GE. And the next thing you know, Atari is like, hey, we're streaming the damn show, Figgy. You want to come on? What's going on? Like, you feel like joining us at all? You know? And Figgy, so we ended up doing a few chants. Like, Figgy, if we chant Figgy, we can get him on. Okay, Figgy didn't work. So we ended up clicking our heels and saying Figgy at the same time. And next thing you know, Figgy says in the chat, do I hear heels clicking? And then puts a screenshot <laughs> of the damn show. And it's like, then our, like, our hearts started fluttering. Like, oh, shit oh shoot this is real you know oh dang he's watching because Bam was already in the chat kicking it with us like mm -hmm. no alpha she said i'm just here to hang out with the homies chill, <laughs> see what's going on and share the vibe you know and so that she was already kicking it with us but she's like i need to see a flamethrower and we opened up like 40 50 crates no joke and we hadn't gotten a flamethrower on the show yet right and like we were pumped to do it but we could only open one crate without our home girl you know, like, no way we're going to start tearing through more crates than like, you know, it's like the early Christmas present, you know, like yeah. we couldn't, we beat our sister to the, to, to the tree and we just had to open one real quick, you know, yeah, but yeah, we couldn't yeah. do too much. Right. You got to do it with the family. That's exactly <laughs> it. Right. And so we ended up, Figgy says, Hey, you know, I'm hearing heels clicking. And so we do another Figgy chant with our heels clicking. And then next thing you know, Figgy says, Hey, Diamond Hands, you want to open up crate number five on the stream? And it's like, oh, did that, is that, is that real? Like, it, it, I was like, is he kidding? Like I said, oh, yeah, sure. Yes, please, sir. And like put my, like my wallet in the chat. And then next thing you know, like as we're continuing to stream, cause like I can only focus on one thing at a time. Like my brain doesn't allow me to like roll in multiple levels like that. Most of y'all have tuned into the damn show. Know that already. Or a uh, new Tokyo news know that already. Like I can't do the discord and talk on Twitter. It's just, it just don't work for me. Right. So that's all going on the Discord. And then I have to like jump over there and figure it out. Next thing you know, I send it through. It, they're like asking for my wallet address again. So I type it into the chat. My wallet address becomes copy pasta. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and like, I'm like, oh. And then my wallet address ends in 420, right? And shout out to Seshface who sent me Diamond Hands G. Like it was like a week ago. Like purchased it on ENS and then sent it to me. Love you, bro. Appreciate that a bunch. And yeah, so like now I have this Diamond Hands GMI dot ETH but like prior to that like my wallet address ended in 420 like why would I want to change that it's a wallet of destiny you know and then so like Figgy sends the crate I can't like 
upload it onto my stream. I can't screen share, right? We're trying to figure out how to stream screen share. That was a whole, like Ezra was just enjoying the technology breakdown that we were having. And it's so amazing. Right. And then next thing you know, Bam's like, well, just send it to Atara. And Atara's like, yeah, send it to me. I'll bust that thing open and send it back to you. I'll put it on stream. So send it over to Atara. Next thing you know, we shake that thing up and it goes boom. And like, look, can we talk about the cool like graphic and like the mode to like Music. reveal how like Amazing. somebody had mentioned it's got this NBA top shot feel to it, you yeah. know, like tearing open a pack and like what a cool way to do that reveal the 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 ix or ux whatever that is to get that done is fucking amazing shout out to the team on that and so the and, crate I, goes, and I mean, as the crate's about to open up remember we had flames going on in the discord Ooh. and the youtube chat so we had flames you were rubbing the thimble yeah we had all <laughs> the lucky charms trying to go for something big we have to get wearing, a. I was wearing my magic bag the entire night. Shout out, Swilson. Wearing my magic bag yeah. the entire night, like trying yeah. to get magic for everybody and like make it happen. And then what do you know? Like, yeah, we get flames in the chat. I got my magic bag on my shoulder. I'm rubbing the thimble. We're doing everything we can to produce the juju, right? And then next thing you know, boom. And Atari, like on the video, Atari's like, oh, shit. And I'm like, Let's fucking go. <laughs> and my wife was sitting next to me. It was just like an absolute incredible experience. Wilson's referring to it lovingly as the flamethrower of destiny from crate number five. Flamethrower uh, of destiny. It, I mean, it has to be, right? Because we had opened 50 fucking crates prior to that. And yeah. then next thing you know, brrr, boom. And then I think I talked about it a little bit in the video, but like these blessings, right? Like stacking blessings and being grateful for the journey without me getting that crate from figgy i wouldn't feel comfortable giving up my other five crates or four crates to be able to sell to go and purchase my wow so i sold four crates back to the market and one thread which i got from the battle.town missions right and so just stacking these blessings along this journey and i, I have my i have a i have a sock Sock with my doorknobs. Oh. Sock with my doorknobs. I'm ready to roll with that. Two vests and one flamethrower. And I was like, you know what? I'm comfortable going into level two with whatever that is, right? Let's figure we're gonna roll with that and like with wows the floor where they're at. Like I said, I remember when I missed out on on the Colt. And uh, I just didn't want to miss out on this opportunity. I know the market's a little going a little haywire anyways right now. Didn't want to look back and say, oh, dang, you know, I've been watching WoW for a minute and I feel like there's some stuff going on behind the scenes that's going to erupt in a little while. No rush. Yeah. Patience is a virtue, but these blessings that stack on to themselves. And then next thing you know, I meant the flamethrower to my WoW because like there's no way I'm not going to do that. Right. Nice. And then I meant my vest and I get an uncommon vest, right, for my WoW. And then I mint my socks. I get an uncommon sock, right? And then I mint my Oni vest. And that motherfucker comes Ooh. out epic. And like, <laughs> hey, do y'all know if Unreal. Epic's good in 10 KTF? Like, that's all. I, I threw out a tweet just asking if anybody knows if Epic means good, right? I mean, it to, <laughs> right? It has to be good, yeah. right? No, it's and, the best. And like, speaking of like total value within that, like, you know, times are hard financially for folks right now. That's no different mm -hmm. for me. You know, to be honest with y'all, I, I work my ass off. You know, I do get down with the get down with 10 KTF. But at the same time, being honest, like that vest, hitting that epic vest, you know, getting the flamethrower, the wow, the whole journey in itself, the accumulative value, right? Not that like we talk about value, you know, in, in like a monetary aspect very much in 10 KTF. I know I sure as hell don't. But like that value that's been injected recently in the last couple of days is irreplicable. You know, and we talk about like the journey and just hitting that epic in that moment. I was sitting with my wife. We did all that together. Every crate we opened, everything we minted together. And it's really turned into a, a journey and an experience for both of us. And so I know Mrs. Modest has joined us recently. And it's just, it's amazing, you know, when we can get you know, our partners to, to join us for the ride, right? We all put a lot into, into 10KTF, into NFTs mm -hmm. and all of yeah. it, right? And it takes a lot from our partners. Shout out to Herb, actually. And when I met up with Herb, you know, he made... Like, he's just like, I just want to say thank you to, to my wife. He's like, for everything you do, for the way you hold them down, like, I know what it takes. And it's like, the people that have been in this journey for a while, you know, meeting him and Carly, just seeing a real NFT couple holding it down together. It was like, oh, dude, that's, 
Like don't lose sight of the journey, you know, of what your partner puts in to, to hold it down for you along the way. So for whatever that is, I don't know. It's just, it was really powerful thing to be able to share. Wow. I'm so happy that you got to buy a wow. It's crazy. Like, yes, because if you really want to see the good in things, like even in the bear market, when, you know, floor is dropping and everything, there is always something good. And the good part is that people like you are able to enter in these projects. I know you wanted it so badly. So it's like an opportunity for people that really want it. And they thought that it would never happen to them, that they can finally get in. And that's like, it's kind of a blessing of the bear market. I was reading a tweet recently was about mutants and the fact that they went down in, in floor as well. And so many people that really wanted a mutant were able to buy it. And that's not bad for the community. That's good for the community. Like you get the people that really want that NFT. They're really going to hold it for the long term. So I'm so happy that you're part of, of the WOW fam. I, I think everyone is happy in the WOW fam. So many WOW community members watch the damn show. They're in 10KTF. So they know you and uh, they're so happy that you're part of this family. And yeah. Just amazing. Also, I would like to remind everyone, okay, like the, the crates, it was kind of luck related to what you find in the crates. Also, this, the level two mint is luck because, you know, you can get a common or you can get an epic, but it's luck. I was not so lucky in either of the two things, but I can say that if you really want something in the long term, if you keep pushing you're going to get what you want. Really, I've never been lucky in a, re in a single reveal in one year that I've been in the NFT space. But right now I'm like sitting with incredible NFTs and, you know, being part of this community, doing all these amazing things. So just don't be jealous and think, oh, of course it's luck because it's, you can really make it anyway. It's not only about hitting that, that reveal that day. It's not only about that because otherwise I wouldn't be here today. So just continue to go forward. And yeah, I'm super happy for both of us. We got like, we got the NFT we wanted this week and it's just, it's just amazing. And yeah, maybe speaking of the NFT, you also had a big week as well. Tell us more about being officially part of the Board Ape Yacht Club with your Mutant Ape. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah, of course. It happened like, it's been like some weeks that I've been thinking, okay, now it's the moment to get in. Like we are like 80% below all time high. And I was like, okay, if I don't do it now, probably I'm going to regret it. So I was starting to put, you know, my investments aside to be able to afford one. And I had the money. I was like, okay, I have the money. So what should I do now? And I was like, I have to wait for an epic. I want a mutant with an epic 10KTF item. You know, we're 10KTF degens. Like we're, you know, of course, we're always thinking about 10KTF <laughs> when we buy an NFT, <laughs> almost always. But anyway, so this mutant, it's the floor. And it's like, I really like it because it looks a bit crazy, but it's not disgusting because I didn't like the disgusting mutants, like the ones that have the dripping face or that they have like worms. Like, no, that thing I don't like. And I see this mutant that as nothing like that like it's really you know it's it doesn't look like it's not super clean it's like a bit crazy but it doesn't have disgusting traits I like the colors and then I check it and it's like okay there is an epic hoodie that goes with it I was like oh my god this is perfect I want it I'm ready okay now moment to get it to move my <laughs> my investments in it oh my god that is started like all the craziness it was like uh, so difficult for me to get to move this fiat into it it was taking forever like 24 hours for this and then you have to wait for that verification is not completed this is too big as this sum is too big for you to transfer like that oh my god so what did i do i went i i contact atare first in a message i was like look i like this mutant super much but i need time to get the ETH." And I need someone to block it for me. And it was like, okay, I can give you this amount. If you find someone else that can give you the rest, 
I can send you this. And I was like, oh my God, like the first person, who do you think? Of course, Swilson. I was like, I have to ask Swilson. It's my moment to, to use the Swilson card. <laughs> It's like each one of us uh, has a Swilson card and we get to use it at one point. So I was like, I really like this mutant. Please, if you can just help me, like just buy it now and then I will pay you back very soon. And she was like, oh my God, I love these things. Of course I'm doing it. <laughs> you know, if you know Swilson, you know, that's so much her, that, that answer, that reaction. So I got the eat from these two amazing people and I got to buy it. I was so happy. And yeah, I don't know what to say. I tweeted it out and then my tweet went crazy and like people were so happy for me. I love it. I got the epic hoodie as well. I sold a crate to afford the thread to mint the hoodie. So now I also have the epic hoodie for the next mission and just super happy. I'm in the Board of Yacht Club and I... <laughs> so pumped <laughs> it's been i mean Kratmus was about tank atf but it seems like Kratmus really hit everybody where what they wanted most right you got you finally got your mutant i know you were talking about that since early june when we were in new york for nft nyc like, i started talking about it when i started thinking that it was possible for me hmm. but i wanted it like i've always wanted it since like right last year when they dropped right. i was like oof it's so cool that... but then when i saw that it was possible i started talking about it right, right. <laughs> so and then, yeah, June. and then diamond for you yeah i know world of women has been your grail for a while and you both got had a freaking amazing week so congratulations guys like that's awesome we love to see the damn show winning the damn <laughs> show is winning <laughs> yay and for me, I'd say the biggest part of my week was honestly just all the live streams. <laughs> having I'm having a lot of fun with that and managing the, you know, the Discord and getting people on as guests and just all that process. I was telling Diamond and maybe a few days ago, after that really long seven hour live stream where we did it in like five hours and then two hours or four and three, the next morning I got up and like it's like I'd done a workout, like my body was exhausted. <laughs> and it's like, because it, it takes a lot, but the my thought wasn't like, oh, wow, like, let's not do that again. I was like, when's the next one? Because I have so much fun with these and to see the community join in on it. And so, yeah, like it's, Crate Miss has been a week of blessings for so many people. I opened a bunch of my crates as well. I have a full mutant set, so I'm ready to go with my mutant into Battletown. And yeah, let's jump into what's happening this week in 10KTF. So the big thing is, of course, I mean, we had Crate Miss last week. You opened up your crates, minting started, and we can talk about that a little bit. But I also want to talk about, for the first time ever, we have two missions at the exact same time in Battletown. So Maybe let's start with you. I wanted to get your take on crafting. So mm -hmm. crafting is now open. What can you tell people about crafting? Because I've heard some people still a little bit confused on if it's random or if, you know, you can know, you can see what you will get when you craft like it was okay. for level one. Oh, okay. So a level one, you know, you just use the Rare Boy app and you can see what a certain NFT is going to craft. So all the rar rarities as well on OpenSea. Level two is different. Level two, we don't get to see the NFT before we mint it. So you are just, you know, in the darkness. So you are just put in your cart this NFT with this blank and then you mint and you don't know what's coming out. So this, like, it's considered by many people a way of leveling the playing field because it's like before it was like, okay, I'm sniping this, these NFTs that I have, that have epics like I did with my mutant for example so that I already know that I'm gonna get that so like the people that are able to afford certain NFTs were had an advantage obviously right. over the others while right now with level two there is not this advantage because anyone can get an epic out of nowhere like you know without knowing before and uh, yeah that's very interesting i didn't get any i got all commons like 100 percent, but it's okay Me i too. love them <laughs> you too. i don't know i feel like we have the same kind of luck with reveals <laughs> yeah we're, <laughs> right? twins. We're, we're twins we're twins like in everything but yeah but i'm super happy like i'm so i'm uh, the fact to see like just to see other community members 
the hit flamethrowers, epics. I don't know. I think that my journey changed. Like I'm changed. I changed so much in one year. At the beginning, you saw these people. They were so different from you. They were so away from you that it was even easier to be a bit jealous, to be a bit, oh, that got that. I didn't get yeah. anything. I don't know. After one year, my vision, like I got so many different emotions in, during this year that right now I'm really just happy for the people that got the good things. I have nothing to say. Anyway, we cannot do anything about luck. So we just have to be happy for the people. It's useless to not be happy for them and be jealous and you know it's not right so i'm so happy for the people that got the great things yeah i wanted to comment on that so i think with twitter being such a machine of like showing you the most popular things you can feel like you know everybody's getting all the things and you don't have anything and i think it sometimes can warp your perspective a little bit but mm -hmm. really at the end of the day when you look at it the fact that you're even in the space the fact that you're even in the game Mm -hmm. right that is in itself a huge victory and you can't ever i think lose perspective of that because we can get caught in the disease of more if you hit a flamethrower you're like oh i didn't get a flamethrower epic if you if he, you know there's all there's always the next thing and i think it's really about not having that expectation but rather being grateful and accepting of what you have and then being open for more if it does come and if it doesn't it's not about you know comparing and looking and coveting what other people have and i think you really learn it in a very trial by fire way in nfts because it's in your face it's there all the time i know during the coda mint i really wanted a coda <laughs> i wanted it so bad and um, i didn't get it and you know it is what it is that teached me a lot like it is sorry that i learned a lot in there like that mint was very heavy but for everyone to be yeah. honest Yeah. Then some people got the code other people that didn't like, it was already so much stress during the, those, like during those two days, then don't getting the code. was just an extra step of that stressful week. And we were not, you know, strong enough to, to be able to not feel the pain. <laughs> so yeah, I felt the pain that, that yeah. time, but it's enough. Not anymore. I learned not to feel like that anymore. Yeah, Alf had a really great thread during that time. And I still think about it now where mm -hmm. he talked about how in a period of just 24 hours, he went from really excited about possibly getting land to not to feeling the disappointment of not getting land because of the gas war. And then on his feed, he saw all the people that got land just in 24 hours disappointed that they didn't get Coda. And it's this infinite just wanting the next thing again and again. And it's like in a very roundabout way, the other side launch or that mint really taught us a lot about managing our mm -hmm. emotions because it's a game of emotions at the end of the day speaking of games Battletown is having two missions this week that is unprecedented we don't know what's going to happen are we going to be able to go to both can we only go to one diamond i wanted to hear your thoughts and i'm sure you guys spoke about this at new tokyo news but i'd love to hear what you think yeah real quick i want to touch on just the state of the economy real quick because times are fucking hard right now Like, y'all, I mean, some people know, like, fuck it. I had $4.69 in my bank account until my wife sent me $40. Before I hit those fucking mints, before Figgy sent me that crate. Like, let's be fucking real, y'all. Times are fucking hard. So don't fucking feel bad. Don't look at somebody else's shit with envy. Like, there's no point in any of that. Like, it's hard. Like, Times are tough. We are fucking blessed. I sent out a tweet today that like, there's no shame in selling any of your NFTs to pay bills. And I'm thinking about selling that Epic. I'm not going to lie to anyone. I don't even own a vehicle. I ride the bus. Right. But I spent $5,000 on a fucking world of women NFT. Right. So like, let's talk about what degening means. Now I'm playing too close to a fine line with my money. So I'm at the spot where, yeah, I need to unwind what I have going on a little bit and that's okay I'm not mm -hmm. gonna be bent about it I'm not gonna be upset it's fucking cool y'all I got a wonderful community that supports the fuck out of me right and so as long as I've got my couple items I know that I'm gonna be okay and I'm fucking lucky to have extra items to be able to put back into the market right now but specifically what I want to do like with a sorry with a battle.town loadout 
especially mm -hmm. knowing that there's two missions, y'all. We're being tested. Let's be very clear about that. So everyone's like talking about this item number 13 in the hero's journey. To get item 13, you have to take the hero's journey. No one knows what the fuck that is. I feel like I've been on four hero's journey and back by now. No joke. You know? <laughs> So like, I'll do whatever we got to do to get through, right? But I know first and foremost, what I need to do is make sure that we have our strength and numbers taken care of first. If we do not pass strength and numbers, no one's getting a fucking hero's journey. It doesn't make sense to me. That's not wag me. That's neg me. That's not everyone's going to make it. And Uncle Neg me is lurking around out there somewhere, right? And so for wag me, we're all going to make it. We all have to work together for our strength and numbers first. And from there, hopefully we have enough left over to be able to take a hero's journey. But make sure you put your shit in the strength and numbers and don't try to play the hero's journey before we reach our goal, y'all. That's the biggest point of what we have going on with this next play. I really yeah. believe that's the ethos we are being tested. And I think part of this is going to be because you can send a loadout. I believe you can reverse a loadout or is it once it's sent? Do you guys know? You can edit. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I think as the two days unfold for the registration, or I believe it's 24 hours of the registration when it starts, yes. we're going to see which mission has enough, which one doesn't have enough, and then readjust based on that. And then we're all going to have to work together so that we make the power loadouts for both of these missions. So. It's going to be a much more coordinated one rather than just submit it and forget about it. You'll need to come in and check in on the Discord and the Twitter to see what is actually happening and where do we need reinforcement. So it'll be a cool dynamic. I'm excited for this. I've been looking forward to something like this because it's now upping the stakes. But you know what it gets me thinking about? It also gets me thinking about what if at some point we have to go on a mission and or there's multiple missions and we don't agree or we have to like, like the community has to pick a side, right? What if it's instead of all of us working together against a mission, what if it's two missions? One is like one side of the mission. The other one is the other side of the mission. And I think about that as like an interesting, like where are you going to stand? Where, where are you going to be? It reminds me of Captain America, Civil War. I love the Marvel movies. And so when the Avengers have to split up and pick sides and It'll be, I do think that's coming. I do think we're going to be tested in that way as well. That's part of the hero's journey. And I mean, we kind of saw it a little bit with the seven badge versus eight badge <laughs> in the discord. There's already a little bit of back and forth between that, but I think that's going to be an interesting dynamic as well. And you can see that this game isn't just going to be submit your stuff, go away and then come back. And then hopefully in a few months you have snapshots and you get ape coin. It is going to require us to, actually get involved and we're going to become part of the lore so maybe that's what the hero's journey is about and that leads into item number 13 there's a lot of speculation about what this is and we have to get it on record what we think so let me set it up for everybody last week when create miss was happening the new items were minted in the 10k atf stock room there's also one more item added which was item number 13 melon pan who is a developer for renew had one item number 13 minted to his wallet which he then shortly after sent to a burn wallet so no 13 exists right now but we know that 13 exists as like an nft to be able to be minted at some point now the only alpha and if it's real alpha we don't know is shopkeeper 2 saying to get item number 13 you have to go on the hero's journey right and i think about Susan brought this up, but I wrote a thread a few months back talking about how 10 KTF is taking us, the community, on the hero's journey. And so that to me is like, it's like, we've been on the hero's journey. What other journey do you want from me? And so I'm curious. And because you guys were at Neetopia News yesterday, I'd love to hear some of the theories that you guys have heard in your own personal theories. Maybe. Let's start with you. Of about the euro's journey specifically we didn't talk about that yesterday so okay. yeah it was mostly about loadouts minting this and that really i don't know because i agree with diamond hands it's it really feels like we did like a ton of heroes journeys like if you if we think about how long we have been around here so <laughs> i have no idea I'm, I'm pretty sure that the people that will show 
generosity and you know love for the community are gonna be rewarded because that's Wagmi and that's Wagmi San. So yeah, I will tell everyone, don't be too selfish, guys. It's it doesn't pay off. Don't be too selfish, guys. I think that this hero's journey is gonna repay the right people that do the right things. And yeah, we'll see that. Diamond, any wild speculation from you on what you think the hero's journey is about or item number 13 specifically? There's that about again. I love it. That's all. <laughs> no, you know, I've always got some ideas. Yeah. Give us a few. Hero's journey specifically. You know, I think that, you know, considering this, the hero's journey, I don't think will be completed in one mission, obviously. You know, maybe that's the eight of eight crates. You know, we got to make sure we hit all our battle.town missions and make sure that we complete our strength of numbers throughout that when we have two options, you know, making sure that we don't fail strength in numbers and end up mm -hmm. putting too much into the other, whatever that is. So just as a reminder to folks, you know, and, and I know our community is super thoughtful and willing to do what the fuck they need to do, looking at our decentralized trust and the way that we shared our tools, this precedence of, you know, making sure that we show up for each other. But, you know, as the community continues to grow, more people continue to file in. And like Neto was saying, you know, hold it down in, in different types of ways. You know, we have our OGs from September. You know, we got Wisdom Tales, we got Robo, Near, we got Natek, we got, you know, like Wisdom. Like, think about all the times that we spent early on when it wasn't very many of us, right? <laughs> like, I've just been thinking about like us building this army. You know, we've been building uh, laterally for a while now you know, that lateral build. And so like our army, our front line of our army continues to build, right? Our numbers, we're all chilling. No one's in a rush to get to the goods, right? The team's done a great job of telling a great story along this. And the community's done a great job of trying to get the word out as best as possible in different and creative ways. So for me, it's like, man, like, yeah, I, I do think that there's one day, you know, I don't, once again, no rush at all. I don't really care, but I do think that there's going to be a day where these blessings are going to come back our way. I know how much the team appreciates what we're doing, you know, and it's more than just having your name written in the lore or whatever. Like that shit is cool as fuck. Let me be very clear. I'm mm -hmm. so grateful for it, you know, but I also think that the team's very conscious, you know, of the effort, the hours, the time, you know, all of it. And there's been so many amazing community members that have put in so much time in so many different ways, whether it's Lopan and Ethan with the art, right? Or just doing your thing on Twitter or jumping into Discord, helping out new folk, or just hitting someone else with the elbow in real life. Like, hey, man, this is a project you want to get in on. There's not one of us that's involved with this project that isn't trying to spread that word. And what better form of marketing than, than you can have than, than you know, 8,000 wild motherfuckers that all wear some tight tin foil that are like, no, let me tell you about this project real quick though, right? And it's so hard to explain, but because it's so hard to explain, it's so hard to price in too, right? The open game theory in this is wide open and there's so many different opportunities for arbitrage along the way. We've seen different types of items take different precedence at different moments. And so whatever this item 13 is, I do assume it will be coveted, you know, just my own feeling, right? Whenever we get something new in this ecosystem, like it's got value, right? Until we can figure out how it all plays into the larger ethos with Gucci Grail, with Genesis and crafted items, with our tools. It's just, it's been an incredible fucking journey. So for me, I'm actually thinking that item 13, I've got my fingers crossed on this, right? But like, what if like, so I don't think they're just going to hand out the fucking Kagamis to everybody. Just like, here's a Kagami just to have one, right? I think you're going to need an NFT to be able to get that physical Kagami. And we know those Kagamis are physical, right? We've seen multiple times with the power buttons, with Figgy's PFP in them, with a bunch of tools in them at the party, IRL. The team, I think the team's ready to cook with those fucking Kagamis. And so uh, we'll see what ends up happening with that light speculation that those could be a Kagami or they might be some sort of a tool for level. I wanted to jump off of that because I spent some time this afternoon looking into 13. I haven't had any time or space to examine it. I've just seen the comments in passing, but I jump into the 10 KTF stock room just to see if there's any patterns, if there's anything I can investigate. And here's what I found. So when you look at the blank items, all the blanks, whether it's level one or level, level two are... Their token IDs start with 655. So I think Sox is 65536. And then 
it goes up from there. Level two falls in that range as well. So it'll be six, five, five, maybe, you know, six, three, something like that. And then all the materials and tools are tokens one through seven. Okay. So scissors, I believe, are, you know, six, tape is seven, and socks are four, something like that. And then threads are in there as well, all that stuff. And then you have 13. So to me, 13 is a hint at, you don't like token. Let me rephrase that. To me, 13 is a hint that level two materials and tools are there and they're coming because you don't have token number 13 without having token number eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, which haven't been minted. So from what I see, five token IDs that are missing, one minted, and that's probably the last one. Now, what do I think that's for? I think token numbers eight through 13 are probably materials and tools that will probably get used to build the mech. That's what I see it as. Maybe it's like a plate of armor. It's, you know, metal, it's titanium, and then it's a hammer or an anvil, something like that lets us get to the mech. And so I do think that probably in the next few weeks, we're going to see that play out in some way. I also made the connection that if you count from eight to 13, that's six. And six is the number of people that wow, or when mentioned, when she was on the phone, you got them all six. And so I think that could be all connected to 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 that specific comic where we were speculating a few weeks ago who is when referring to or what is when referring to when she's talking about all six so to me the patterns line up it makes sense and 13 was just a little nod to the community that hey don't worry like if there's any doubt if you look through and you know the alpha you'll be able to see level two tools and materials are probably coming we haven't forgot about you genesis Cross your fingers. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just wanted to to say one thing. Press uh, uh, shared with me a very interesting theory about uh, item thirteen. I just he said that he thinks that it could be some kind of potion or some kind of thing that makes you level up your items in rarity. So like you have a common, you take that, it becomes uncommon or rare becomes epic and stuff like that. But I don't know. It was just interesting. It was speculating a lot about these things of changing the rarity connected to the fact that we get more points every time we jump into a new uh, rarity level. But yeah, that's the only thing, crazy thing that I heard from the community, to be honest. And that could actually make sense given that when was saying, let's sell some level up next mm -hmm. week a few weeks ago we don't really know if that referred to crates now or if that is actually something that's still coming up so that could be something that'd be an interesting play as well to you know upgrade your nfts one thing and i remember one about. epic equals three mutants so like for all, everyone with epics don't be fucking sitting there like oh no the fucking floor price is going to shit because everyone's <laughs> leveling up right now no your fucking epic is still worth three mutants motherfuckers <laughs> all right Wagney. you know so like these market forces we've seen the like the community like yeah of course like it matters right but like do you have faith in the larger ethos you know and being a true fan that we're all gonna make it you know at the end of the day we're all gonna make it you know i've written a few theories on what the what the premise of 10k true fans looking into the history of biggie the history of people the history of the team and like where they're at like they're very conscious caring empathetic motherfuckers right like they're not some hard ass bro mofos right like that's not their jam and so like i'm just i'm, I'm very confident in like that this ethos of we're all gonna make it like we can't make it unless we all make it together and so like this level up like yeah i just got my epic like I, I just said how much that means to me, not just like in my set, but like at financially too, right? But I'm not going to sit here and piss in the wind and like be like, oh yeah, no, I, other people are getting epics too. No, that epic's still three mutants and in the long game, <laughs> fucking make it hardcore now actually because I've got the epic and I would love to see other people be able to step up from their rares and level up into epics too right like we need to be happy for people and celebrate these wins and ingratiate bring them in this is building bridges y'all this is my shit I love this so much and I'm really hopeful that's opportunity that can come through but I do want to mention the team 
we've been like waiting for physicals too, right? I don't think physicals come out until the other side opens up. I think we're going to have to go to the shop to get those fucking physicals. And so whenever other side opens up, like, just know that like, that's going to be a separate piece that's just waiting. And we know Queen Nikki has already, love you, Nikki, hope the baby's doing good. We know Queen Nikki already said that like, physicals are a small portion of what's going on in this larger ecosystem, right? Yep. And that Gucci physical, y'all, no one knows what the fuck a Gucci physical is yet, right? So there's still good things waiting just around the corner, y'all. I know we're all jacked up on Kratmas, but stay ready, <laughs> stay ready. I mean, right after Kratmas, it's new new year's eve or new year's day and it kind of lines up not exactly but with the one year anniversary there is some sort of a new year coming for new tokyo so september 17th could really be the new year for this universe that we have so uh, i know we talked last week about some of the theories so we're not going to get into it this week we're just going to see how this week unfolds i did want to get into the uh, community shout out of the week so Maybe we spoke about it. We missed last week. Mm -hmm. A lot of things going on, but we have mm -hmm. a very special one this week because this is, she's a true OG of 10 KTF there since pretty much day one. She's been writing incredible pieces of, sorry, I cut out for a sec. She's been writing incredible pieces on community lore. And so maybe I'd like for you to share your screen and introduce our community shout out of the week. Okay, so Maggie is not only a very important OG in the 10KTF community, she's also very involved in the WoW community. So this is the perfect episode because we just got them on a WoW. <laughs> so uh, yeah, she has been creating these stories about Reverie, which is a girl that lives in New Tokyo. And if you if you go there in the in the bio, there is actually a website which is thebookofreverie.com, and there you can find there is a digital book where you can actually read all of the episodes of the story of Reverie, and it's so interesting because she's able to mix graphics, so very nice graphics and images that she makes with the story, so she writes the story as well. So both artists, uh, like visual artist and a writer as well, and she's now selling also this uh, hollow hoodie. If you know um, about them, like if you know the Wauji collection, you know that there is uh, this very important trait, like people love this trait is a clothing trait and it's called holo udi and she's actually she created a real version of it and you can even buy it if you want it like she's incredible like i just wanted to make sure that we give space to community members that are really making a difference and really doing amazing things for our community but in general in the nft space yeah just go check it out yeah, so the website is thebookofreverie.com and you can check out our Twitter at Magdalen, that's M-A-G-D-Y-L-A-N. I'll leave a link in the show notes for everybody to take a look at as well. But Maggie, you are the community shout out of the week. We love your stories. Keep doing what you're doing. And it's so important to have this kind of community lore get continue to built out week over week from all different facets and there's, I know you guys are working on something with a few other people in the background. We're not going to announce it. We're going to wait for you guys to do it. But we saw a quick preview. And Can't wait. I think, I think yeah, I speak for everybody <laughs> when I say that's a really exciting thing that's going to come out. And it's going to make all the... It's going gonna, it's gonna to really empower the community to get information in a much more cohesive way. So I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. And uh, another thing that is very interesting in how it's how this creates even more connections between uh, 10KTF and the other communities. So this is a specific project that connects 10KTF and World of Women. And like, I, I love that. There should be more. There is also in other community, communities like Oni, for example, but I, I love this specifically because it's about World of Women. Love you so much, Maggie. Everything you do, you know, we've been shouting you out for days. We won't stop doing it either. Keep up that amazing work. Um, yeah, I just had Maggie like shows up every week to fucking New Tokyo News. It's crazy. Like just the commitment, right? And like mm -hmm. reached out in my DMs a couple times and just like what it means to be building bridges out here, right? Like continuing to give that spotlight and that voice. Our community members work hard. They put in whatever they're doing, whether it's research, whether it's art, right? Whether you're building your own brand or just supporting 10 KTF's brand right? Or the damn show's brand, right? Like understand we're building brands here now. Okay. So don't get left behind y'all. If you've got an idea that you want to get up and run with, 
it's time to tap in. It's time to get this going. Okay. 10 KTF looking at my timeline this week. 10 KTF is a popular NFT project right now. Y'all look forward to capitalizing on the moment. And if you have an idea for something that you want to, like I've been saying, I do believe we're all going to have our own shops in new Tokyo right? Pieces of land in new Tokyo and prepare for that moment. Be ready. Don't let it surprise you. People are working in the background right now. So if you want to be at the front cutting edge, be ready to work. The time is now. So, time is wow. Yeah, <laughs> time is now. The time is wow, for sure. And so yeah, just continue thinking about what you'd want to do in 10 KTF and NFTs. Lately, I've been thinking about a couple different things. I've also realized we got to protect our ideas a little bit, y'all. Don't be sharing everything out willy nilly. Keep it to your chest a little bit until you're ready to roll that out. I'm working on a couple of things myself. Know that. And I'm really excited to introduce them to the community. We also had people join us again in the Discord. People recently created a stand with Wagmi San for his everydays a couple of days ago, which was incredible. It's a giant Wagmi San with red eyes and a flamethrower. It says GM on it, and he has 15 kills. So Wagmi San's <laughs> killing it. But maybe tell us more about what people announced in the 10KTF Discord. Yeah, like he told us that on September 8th, there's going to be a space with the one and only crazy car, which was an, a guest of the damn show some episodes ago. So go watch that episode if you don't know who Crazy Carl is because he's an amazing person. And uh, yeah, they're just going to uh, do it like one year after they did a, a previous space like one year ago. It was like the first space that people took part in. And uh, it's going to be interesting because during our damn show, we said that like Carl said that that was the peak of his career because it, it went like downhill after that. And then we said, but the damn show is going to bring you back. And this is what actually happened. So I'm super happy for Carl. <laughs> <laughs> the damn show cool. comeback, baby. If you need a yeah. comeback, if you're down and out, come on the damn show and we're going to get you right back. Going to give you some magic. <laughs> yeah, some damn magic. <laughs> hey, and I just want to talk about people's PFP, people's post that he did about Rise with Wagme Son, y'all. Like, y'all know I got that people PFP speculation, right? Jay Tyler, like, brought it up first, right? And I do think that this is going to end up, like, I've got my fingers crossed. I do think that like, once again, Beeple doesn't sell his every day to the market like that. But think about this select facet for those of us that have been putting in the work along the ride, right? I know politics is bullshit on his one year anniversary. You know, uh, he considers his collection subscriptions, right? And 10 KTF is, are not Beeple's to be very clear, right? That's separate from what he does. It's, he's a co-founder of 10 KTF, but these are not Beeple's. But I do think that maybe Beeple, I mean, call me crazy, right? Beeple or Saboteur, I don't give a fuck which one, right? Saboteur and Beeple do a collab together and then do a 100 release, like release 100 editions for like the 100 grinders that we've got in the community or what have you, right? Like I think there's alternative routes to inject community value there where like for me, you could just, Beeple, you could shatter that fucking rise with Wagme and give us all a piece of it with no like collector market value. Like we all know that like, fragment pieces don't really have like huge value to them but it's not about that right i think it's more about the journey the sentimental value and the memento speaking of people and what we can end on this what i've noticed is that people doesn't really do too much press until he's ready to announce something big or a project and then you can see in the weeks and months leading up to it people start to make more appearances on spaces and uh, and so what that's what this is all telling me is that the reemergence of people in in Twitter and, you know, some discords as well means that something big is coming. He's going to make a big announcement. He did talk about on Faroque Space, something about a warehouse that he has bought and he's doing something with in North Carolina. And somebody asked him in the 10KTF Discord, when is 10KTF going to have a giant party in North Carolina? So maybe that's, maybe for the one year, that's what he's going to announce. Maybe it's a Beeple every day, you know, next edition. We don't know, but we know something for sure is coming because if you look at Beeple as an artist, this is his pattern. And so I'm excited for that, whatever that is. We're going to keep it. We're going to keep it about an hour this week on the damn show, everybody. I want to thank everybody for that watches and tunes in. 
like and subscribe the video guys we do this every week for the community we do it for you we really enjoy it and we're also doing more live streams some more impromptu some more scheduled but you can find out all of that on twitter which is at the damn show underscore once again this episode was sponsored by boss wolf this is boss wolf this is the last episode that he's sponsoring for now oh, wink <laughs> yeah he might be gone but maybe he'll be back we don't know wink <laughs> And so if you want to win a Nape Day pack, look out for the Twitter, look out for the tweet. You're going to like, retweet, and follow us, and you might win a Genesis Ape Day pack. That's all it for this week. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Bye, all. Bye.